Hey everybody on YouTube, Carl Alexander here, and in today's video, I'm going to be exploring the resolution of 1800p. Now we all know about 1080p, 1440p, and 2160p, but after seeing so much coverage on the PS4 Pro and its checkerboard upscaling to 4K, I began wondering about how a PC would manage upscaling. 2160p, or 4K as we call it, is still out of the realm of almost all PC gamers. Unless you've got the cash to buy dual 1080s or a Titan XP, getting decent frame rates at decent settings is just not in most people's reach. Many of those PS4 Pro games that are using checkerboard upscaling are rendering at a native resolution of 1800p, so I wanted to test if it would be a good stopgap for PC users before affordable native 4K is possible. A 4K image is rendering nearly 8.3 million pixels, compared to 1800p's 5.7 million pixels. So I tested out 5 games at 1800p and 2160p on my GTX 1070 to see if a modern sweet spot card can get close to 60fps while delivering a close to native 4K resolution. So before we get to the benchmarks, the full list of parts I'm using consists of the Intel i5-7600K overclocked to 5GHz being cooled with the Corsair H100 IV2, the MSI Z270 SLI Plus motherboard, 16 gigs of G-Skill DDR4-2400 RAM, an old Fatality 700W power supply, and my Gigabyte GTX 1070 G1 Gaming Edition. And because I don't own a 4K screen myself, all the benchmarks are using NVIDIA's dynamic super resolution to super sample. Using DSR made the actual resolution I tested 3325 by 1871. So though that's not exactly 1800p, it's close enough for the purposes of this video. So on to the benchmarks. I tested 5 games consisting of Fallout 4, The Witcher 3, Hitman, Tomb Raider, and The Vanishing of Ethan Carter Redux, all at high settings at both 1800p and 4K resolutions. As you can see here, at 4K, most of the games got over 40 FPS on average, with the older Tomb Raider getting over 60. 40 FPS isn't bad, but the dipping into the 30s definitely became noticeable. Lowering the resolution to 1800p saw most games getting averages into the 50s, and low frame rates almost all over 40. Though that's only around a 13 FPS bump on average, it still made a huge difference in how smooth the games played. And of course, these are benchmarking runs. Many times the games were holding very close to 60 FPS in less intense areas. So that's great. The average increase in frame rates by lowering the resolution to 1800p was 27%. And that 27% really gets us close to that sweet spot of 60 FPS, and in a few games goes a bit over that. However, the real question here is how does the over 40% decrease in pixels affect how the game looks on a 4K screen? Well, by using Nvidia's quality upscale setting in the Nvidia Inspector, I would say it did quite well. Though I did these benchmarks at home with DSR, I was able to test the games out on my friend's Sony 4K TV, and honestly, I could not tell the difference between the resolutions. I'm sure if you inspect the screen closely, 1800p would have a bit of artifacting and some slight blur, but I was pleasantly surprised by how good this looked on a native 4K screen. Currently 1440p screens are quite expensive, and if you're like me, you can't afford a $600 or $700 monitor. More budget 1440p options don't really seem to exist because they are almost all targeted at the enthusiast gaming market, which add features like high refresh rates and G-Sync. Ever since seeing 4K in person, I've been browsing for some more budget-friendly options. I'm personally not as concerned with things like high refresh rates and really low latency. As long as the screen is 60Hz and has a decently fast display, I'm on board. I've been eyeing a few budget 4K options like the 24-inch Samsung UE590 or the Asus MG24UQ. Seeing that 1800p delivers good frame rates at close to native 4K is just another thing nudging me closer to picking up one of these 4K displays. If you look at the Steam hardware survey, only 0.22% of current PC users are using 4K, and over 50% are using something under 1080p. This is still a really small market, and that's not surprising considering the cost of 4K gaming. However, with graphics cards getting better every single year by huge percentages, 1800p may be the stopgap that finally makes me jump on the 4K bandwagon. Okay, well I guess that's about it. 
I hope this video was informative in some way, and if you have any questions about how I do my benchmarking or my screen settings, just let me know in the comments. As always, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, I think you know what to do, and if you haven't already hit that subscribe button to see more videos like this one in the future, do that. And before I go, I just want to say thanks to everyone out there who has subscribed to my channel. I just hit 500 subscribers, and though I know in the YouTube world I'm still a tiny, tiny channel, it means a lot to me that so many people are watching my videos. I'm going to keep making them as long as people watch them, so I hope you check out all the videos I'll have coming in the future, and I'll see you in the next one.